What's up, guys, and welcome back to the DualSense Podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jason. I'm joined, as always, by the world-renowned violin player who once played a private concert for Pope Francis himself, but he also happens to be an avid PlayStation gamer. Mm -hmm. Travis, how are things? Good. How'd you, how'd you know that? That's supposed to be in the uh, Vatican archives, sealed. <laughs> well, I have a hookup. I happen mm-hmm. to know Tom Hanks, and oh. Tom got into the into the Vatican archives for me, and he uncovered that about you. So, big secret. Even outed. Big secret, and Leah Remini doesn't know this either. But Scientology is really just Catholicism. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. They they both uh, worship a spaghetti monster. <laughs> I think that sounds about right. Speaking of spaghetti monsters, how about that returnal footage we saw? <laughs> Dude, oh man, we're going to talk about that, but there are some right. spaghetti monsters. There's no shot you're going to play that game, is there? Now? <laughs> I saw that and thought, fuck that. There's um, no fucking way. Here's the thing, though. I, I mean, not to get too far down this wormhole, we're going to talk about it, but I mean, I could play that game and never see that creature, so. That's true. You know, it is what it is. If I if I do, I'll die immediately and get a new one. That's true. That's true. Well, I got to say, before we, we get going here, I'm I'm a little perturbed today because I was doing fine. But then when I got home, I checked the mailbox as I always do. And I had a bill in the mail from a toll bridge company. (laughs) And I'm like, hmm, well, that's, that's, that's interesting because I have not crossed any toll bridges lately. So I was like, wait a second. I just, you know, got rid of my old car and got a new one in the last, you know, month or so, a couple months, whatever. And I was like, this has to be for my old car. So I open it up and sure enough, sure enough, the asshole who bought my car has made uh, made a trip on December the 11th across the bridge a couple of times. And uh, they had the uh, they had the audacity to send me the bill for it, because I guess on December the 11th, somehow the car was still registered in my name, even though I got rid of it on November the 22nd. Uh, so a almost a month later. How is that even possible? Do they have and the what if that car had been plate? used in a murder? <laughs> that's a great like, question i don't what know that, what if the fucking question. car had been used in a murder and they come track me down well like, you, we don't know yet i mean what if he drove true. it to what if he drove it to the Capitol and broke in and all they could see was a mask <laughs> in the car you're, you're gonna be serving 10 to 15 years jesus christ what a what a great system we have here in these united states right Gosh, maybe damn. we should riot and stuff well We've lost all hope because it only took a few ignorant uh, hillbillies like myself. I'm just not ignorant. <laughs> and uh, to break into the capital of the country. Uh, so, you know, that, that that bolsters the faith pretty well. Anyway, have you uh, been playing anything new this week or just your normal stuff? Just my normal uh, GT Sport 2K. I think that's all I've actually played this week. Nothing crazy. Yeah. I did want to give a big shout out to 2K. We did an off season. And mm. um, the created players seem to be more realistic. Uh, they're not perfect, but you know we they seem to be within a more acceptable boundary. So right. thank you for listening to the community for once. Yeah. Now, just in the next you know four or five years, listen to the community and fix all the other shit that doesn't work. Still, <laughs> yeah. after years. Uh. Well, I played my normal stuff as well. Just you know, Red Dead and. Uh, NBA, like you just mentioned, and then uh, I think that's really about it. I mixed in a little bit of Dirt 5 here and there, but I did play one new game Mm -hmm. this week, and it's on the PlayStation Vita. I was just in bed the other night, wanted to play something uh, for a little bit to lull me to sleep, and I played a game called Darkest Dungeon, which is... Ron Wayne Gacy's base. (laughs) <laughs> right, it's where I'm going to be whenever they, whenever they find out uh, that I'm attached to that car. But uh, it's a hardcore side-scrolling dungeon crawler, and believe it or not, it, does. it has dungeon in the name. So it's kind of like 
um, the art style of that Valiant Hearts game that you like that you like so much. Right. But it's um, it's like a turn based fighting game, basically. Like you have you uh, find and recruit characters, and the goal is to basically like take back your family name because this town has been overrun with monsters and shit basically so um you're trying to basically clear out all, all these dungeons to restore this mansion in this town basically so it's kind of neat um but it's supposed to be pretty hard but i've only played the first uh dungeon i guess so we'll see how that goes but uh, i'm intrigued i'm intrigued enough to keep going so and i you know i love the vita so i like to mix it in here and there but that's really it uh so with that let's jump into the news here number one Japanese research firm Ace Economic Research Institute. <laughs> My friends say Ace, you are best. Ace, you are best. That's where he works. He went and opened that. We'll have to tell that story one day. We will. Oh man, <laughs> Japanese research firm Ace Economic Research Institute believes that Sony Interactive Entertainment is neglecting their home country after only two hundred and forty thousand PS5 units were sold in the first six weeks in the island nation. The 240,000 consoles sold are the lowest out of every PlayStation system except for the PlayStation Portable during the same six weeks, six week sales period. Website Video Games Chronicle reported that the research firm believes, quote, Sony is not taking Japan seriously, end quote, and that the PlayStation brand is in, quote unquote, decisive decline, with analyst Hideki Yasuda stating, quote, Total sales of 240,000 are by, by far the lowest in the history of the PlayStation home consoles. If this were to, to continue, lifetime sales of PS5 would perhaps end up at less than half of PS4, end quote. For context, the PlayStation 4 has sold less than 10 million units in Japan to date. And Yasuda added that Japanese consumers believe Sony Interactive Entertainment has begun to abandon them, in part due to the, to the decisions to change Japan's default controls to adhere to Western standards. <laughs> the old, the classic cross is confirm and circle is cancel controversy, as well as the lack of Japanese narration for the PlayStation 5's reveal videos. Seems kind of petty. Mm -hmm. This all comes on the heels of a Bloomberg report from earlier in the year, which stated that SIE Japan Studio had seen the contracts of many of its creators not renewed and developer support teams reduced by as much as a third from their peak development numbers, which may explain the high-profile departures of Bloodborne and Demon Souls producer Teru Teruyuki Toriyama and Silent Hill and Gravity Rush creator Keichiro Toyama, among others. Later in the week, website Gamatsu reported hardware sales numbers in Japan from December 21st through January 3rd, and during that time, the PlayStation 4 outsold both models of the PlayStation five combined. So what's your, what's your take on this? Well, they probably outsold the PS four. I mean, the PS four probably outsold the five cause there aren't any fives to buy. So I don't really, it's Fair. kind of misleading True. Where, where to go with this story. All of this seems super petty to me. And are, are people really upset about this or is this just the media telling us and telling them they should be upset, which, which is standard par for the course for the entire world right now. <laughs> True. Nobody gives a shit if it's X or O. I mean, get the fuck out. Look, the last <laughs> time that Japan got mad that the world wasn't taking them seriously, they spent 60 years trying to be a conquering nation, and that ended with two nuclear bombs. So maybe we should keep a little perspective here. Big yikes. So they are they're a very proud and culturally old school uh, culture, right? Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. So I could understand why little slights would piss them off. But look. If I'm Sony, here's what I'm thinking. Sure, we might make a better system and better first-party games than Microsoft, but they have a much broader scale, as in I think Microsoft has some games that are have broader appeal. So, like, everybody talks about how great Yakuza is. I've never met somebody who's played Yakuza. Ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when they say they're getting their backs turned and they aren't renewing these guys like Toriyama and Toeyama, maybe mm -hmm. it's because they realize... If we make these other games, sure, we may alienate our tiny island country of Japan, but if we're making other games with more mass appeal, that money is going to still come in. So I understand what they're saying about Sony. It's almost like they're, it's almost based off of this article and based off of these quotes. Um, you know, Yasuda is basically acting like Sony's selling out of their roots. 
Mm-hmm. And they're being uber capitalist, basically. But right, what do you expect about what do you expect a company to do for them to remain relevant in the marketplace? They're gonna have to do that at some point anyway, and and it's hard to to me it's hard to justify spending the money they spend to create all of these like Japanese sword anime fighting games that like maybe mm-hmm. sell a million copies. It just seems like that's a, a kind of it. Sh- this shouldn't be un unexpected to me yeah Uh, so i have a few thoughts so first in a way it's sort of simple math like you're alluding to so japan's population is about 127 million people okay that's a third of the united states so even if you just take that at face value that sort of explains why sony has even moved their playstation headquarters to california and why there's sort of this seeming seemingly shift in focus on the United States to be the primary market for, you know, PlayStation. But at the same time, I also understand a little bit why Japanese uh, people would be upset because obviously Sony is as a corporation, as a parent corporation is headquartered in Japan. So you feel like, you know, I guess they owe you a little bit or in a way, or they should take care of you a little bit. (laughs) Uh, better. I, I don't know. I, I guess if I put myself in their shoes, it, it would be like, you know, if Ford, I, I don't know if, if Ford, if all, if all of the American automotive makers said, okay, we're going to switch the driver seat from where it currently is to the, to the passenger seat. We're going to flip where the steering wheel is on the cars, you know, because that's, you know, they do, they do this in other parts of the world. I might be upset a little bit, but I would get used to it. I mean, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing to lose my mind over, but right. so I guess I understand it a little bit. I, I, I don't, un, I know it's part of their culture, but I don't, I don't quite understand being uh, insulted by these little changes that they've made. Yeah, I think it's just simple economics uh, at the end of the day. But the last thing I wanted to say about it is I think that we've talked about this several times now. And from a bunch of different angles, one is sales of the console in Japan. And we've talked about all these guys leaving Japan studio and, and, uh, you know, these high profile guys. So I think with what we're, there's so much smoke now that we're seeing, starting to see the fire from the smoke clearing. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of what we have, uh, speculated on episodes in the past it, about these guys kind of seeing the writing on the wall and maybe, you know, they just th- saw an opportunity to, mo- to move on as far as the developer guys. I think that that's becoming more evident that Sony is making somewhat of a cultural shift within mm-hmm. PlayStation to, you know, make, to westernize more and b- make, you know, the, you know, the United States uh, and North America really the primary market mm-hmm. and, um, maybe, and you said you made a comment the other, one of the other episodes about maybe their budgets have been cut for Japan studio on certain projects and things like that. And mm-hmm. that seems like it very well could be the case. So right. we'll have to see. Time will tell. Number two, PlayStation 4 production has been severely reduced, at least in Sony's home country of Japan. Oh God. <laughs> As website Push Square reported that Sony confirmed on Tuesday that it will cease manufacturing all but one model of the PS4 the 500 gigabyte PS4 Slim in jet black. Japanese consumers will no longer be able to purchase the various other colorways or disk drive size variants of the base console, as well as the PS4 Pro. Sony will begin using these newly freed up production lines to increase production of the PlayStation 5 for worldwide distribution. Any any thoughts here? Well, that's right in line with the other stuff. It makes sense. Sure. Um money wise right you want to push your new product i'm sure that the uh japanese homelanders may have a different perspective of this but you know this also makes me feel better about getting more games that are only made for ps5 if they're if they're willing to Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and cut the old generation back for these production lines for the five that's i feel like that's a good sign for our exclusive ps5 kind of development yeah i agree I think that this will trickle down to their other production systems in other countries, you know, and I think that this is just a, the first kind of domino. I think that 
the other part of this is that they may see the sales numbers of the PlayStation 4 in Japan and they might, it's they've someone somewhere had to say, all right, well, look, they want to keep buying PS4 in Japan. Well, we can fix it. We'll just cut <laughs> off the, we'll just, we'll right. just cut the spigot off. Like, let's just start, let's just cut down to one model of the PS4. You won't be able to hardly find them anywhere. They're going to have to start buying PlayStation 5s. We're about to pick up production anyway. They're going to have more available to buy, you know, in a, in a couple months. Right. So. It's probably a little bit of, you know, win-win for PlayStation in that way. Number three, developer Housemark released the third episode of their Housecast development diary for the upcoming PS5 exclusive sci-fi shooter Returnal. The video featured never-before-seen gameplay with commentary from the game's director, Harry Krueger, who liked a tweet of mine earlier today, (laughs) who reiterated, no big fucking deal who reiterated that the game will feature the signature housemark gameplay, only it's been translated this time to a AAA package in a third-person perspective. The DualSense adaptive trigger features were also shown in-game, with players alternating weapon firing modes between half and full trigger pulls. And we also learned that the game features fully customizable control schemes, as well as level verticality complete with a grappling hook. So, did you get a chance to watch any of this uh this little nine minute video that they did with the gameplay yeah i watched it the the aforementioned flying spaghetti monster was awful Uh uh-huh and there was like a really a really tall version of groot i think (laughs) yeah that was pretty cool um to to harry's point and we're on a first name basis now that he liked to tweet to harry's point (laughs) um about the you know the signature house mark gameplay the way that the um your characters moving and shooting feels very much like a house smart game. Like mm-hmm. it, it almost feels like, you know, cause like you had like your, your side scroller thing where you're flying around and you're shooting stuff. It almost felt like that in a mm-hmm. 3d version. Mm-hmm. And even the way, like we noticed that you would shoot certain things and then these little things would fly out and they'd kind of like chase you around and go into your back. I assume <laughs> yeah. that that's like health or some sort of consumable or material that you collect um, or maybe it's information that helps you understand uh, where you are or whatever. I'm not really sure, mm-hmm. but even yeah. that felt house marky, like the whole thing felt house marky, which I was excited about because yeah, you know, as long as it's house marky, I can get over the spaghetti worm onion monster thing. <laughs> yeah. It, re- it reminded me of next machina. Right. I mean, completely. And then also, you know, to an extent, Alien Nation, which we mm-hmm. both played together, and Dead Nation too. You know, it's got that, uh, those same type of like dash mechanics and, you know, just bullet yeah. hell where there's just <laughs> shit totally always shooting at you or right. attacking you. You know, you're just dodging and shooting and then there's particles bl- effects, you know, everywhere. Everything's blowing up and whatever. Yeah. So Particle effects are really fun. Yeah. It looks it looks really good, and of course I I watched it on YouTube with compression and everything, so I'm sure that mm-hmm. it's going to look really good on the five. And it's just got it's just got that house mark DNA, like you mentioned, and that's just as as someone whose top ten PS4 games include Next Machina, I'm super stoked <laughs> about this. I've I've pre ordered it. I'm good to go. I'm rock hard um, for <laughs> Eternal, and I cannot wait. Number four. PlayStation announced the January editions to the PlayStation Now service over on the PlayStation blog on Tuesday, and it's a rather strong month. The new games are highlighted by Ubisoft's open world racing game, The Crew 2, which will be available on the service until July the 5th. The other editions include the excellent Mars colony building and management game Surviving Mars, as well as Frostpunk, another great city building management game. Website Push Square reported that the Bioshock Collection remasters have also been permanently added to the service, although it was not mentioned in the PlayStation blog post for whatever reason. I don't know why they do that shit because that's <laughs> a bit; those are big games. But right. uh, what do you what do you think about the additions here? Well, these are all pretty awesome additions. Obviously, the Bioshock's probably the headliner, which would be weird to me not to include that. Mm-hmm. As far as which one I would want to play the most, it would be either the Bioshock Collection or Surviving Mars. I think Surviving Mars looks super cool. Mm-hmm. The colony management game, it's kind of in line with, you know, some of the stuff we're seeing, like what Elon wants to do and some of these other private space companies. So I think it would be pretty cool. And I, I like the idea of building my own colony on another planet. And it, and it seems like it's, and I say realistic, but it seems like it's relatively within the realm of possibility, at least like the things you have to worry about and do um, as far as like, you know, growing food and protecting yourself from 
yeah. building your shelters, protect yourself from the sun and the elements and whatnot. So I think it looks pretty sweet. The crew too, I've heard decent things about it, but I just don't mm-hmm. have time to fool with that. I've, I'm way far behind the eight ball there. Yeah. So I have played all three. Uh, well, I've played all of these games. Um, I've played the first Bioshock game. Bioshock's not for me, which I know is blasphemy to <laughs> many people, but it just, I, it doesn't click for me. I think the, the environment is cool in those games and kind of the world building, but the gameplay just doesn't hold up in my opinion. Anyway, the crew too is cool. Uh, right. It's a open world racing game where you can transition mm-hmm. between you know car and boat and plane, and it's re- it's really dope. Did you play that with me a little bit online? Yeah, yeah, we did okay. some races. I think we did some. Um, we think we did a boat race. Yeah. I want to say we flew something. Yeah, that's a I, fun game. I'm still terrible at flying things. If you don't listen, <laughs> I'm miserable at flying anything, and I'm always always jumping the cockpit though. You do. Even on Battlefield 1, when we've been playing, you've been bitching about how you cannot get into a plane. So. <laughs> and then I get in one and I immediately uh, got shot down or I You just it. <laughs> eat shit. Yeah, you just eat shit. So anyway, uh, the best... So I played Frostpunk just a little bit uh, because something... I had it and then something else came out and distracted me. And I can tell you that Frostpunk is got to be an addictive game. I could just see it. I could just see like the little pieces, but in my opinion, Surviving Mars is the best game on the list, and I have played it quite a bit. I have a colony on on Mars, uh, just oh, sitting good. there as we speak. Yeah, I didn't know where city. you were going to be at. Yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> Matt on, Damon there? Is he eating his own shit potatoes? <laughs> I've got a lot of Matt Damons now at this point. So it's one of the, it's another game just like City Skylines, where you'll you can start playing it. And then you're like, okay, just one more day, you know, I'm going to build this, this, and this. And then, uh, you know, that day and I'm done, I'm going to, I'm going to save it and get off. And then before you know it, it's like two in the morning. You're like, oh shit. It's like, Mm -hmm. whatever. I I didn't mean to play 50 more souls or, you know, whatever. So, uh, it's, it's really fun, man. I, as someone who likes, you know, roller coaster tycoon and those sorts of things, and you obviously like space as well. I, I think that game, it would be for you. So. Souls are days on Mars, by the way, if you don't know. Yes, they are. It's S-O-L. It's not S-O-U-L. Mm-hmm. That would be surviving hell. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but I know you don't have PlayStation Now right now, but if you ever tried it to do a trial, you should definitely uh, play that game. I think you'd really like it. It's awesome. So if you guys are into those games, you should definitely try them. And I would say, regardless, I think you should give Surviving Mars a try just to see if it's for you. Number five, Travis, we also have several news nuggets and there's actually some really interesting things in here as well so feel free to jump in if you want to first nugget developer people can fly announced on wednesday that their upcoming third person co-op shooter outriders has been delayed from february 2nd to april the 1st which is a terrible release date (laughs) for a game they also announced that a free demo will be available starting february 25th so I'm interested in that. I might as well yeah, check that out. I'll definitely check the demo out. Although I can never remember how many days are in February. So I'm not sure how many days <laughs> that gives me before the game comes out. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't I have no idea. Who knows? Who fucking knows? Publisher Limited Run Games announced a, <laughs> announced a run of physical editions of the cult classic Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game complete edition for PS4. Pre-orders will open on January 15th on the Limited Run Games website at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. You might say that is a that run it will be limited. How li- it has to be pretty limited because like what five people are going to buy it? <laughs> I'm so over Scott Pilgrim versus the World. I don't care. Every, you hate every the, you few hate months game. it's something else. Every few months we're going to run. <laughs> we re- we remastered it. We're going to run limited. Who gives a flying fuck? If I made this game, it would be called <laughs> Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Travis doesn't fucking care. The oh end. man. You Every, hate this game. You have no idea what it is. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's stupid. He uh, wants to fuck some girl and she has a bunch of old boyfriends. Like, I'm sorry that she was a glizzy, glizzy gobbler and then now you have to go fight all the girls. <laughs> None of that's my problem. Just get a different girl. Look, he's like 15 in the show. He has no idea that it's, she's not worth it. She's not worth it. They're doing a six-week pre-order on this thing, okay? People are, people are big time hyped about this. I'm not going to cool. get it. Well, make sure hyped. you at me. Just at me and tell me how wrong I am. 
Website Game Informer reported that Dying Light 2 art director and writer Pavel Selinger has resigned from developer Techland Studios. Selinger had been with the studio across various roles since 1999. So that there's something. So two things. First of all, either this guy was done with his role for Dying Light 2. Either he had written everything he, that he needed to write. Mm-hmm. He had designed whatever art needed to be designed and he you know had been there 20 something years he was like i'm good i'm out of here which is cool and you know so he moved on if that's the case then the game is in good shape and close to being completed you know and maybe 2021 release is in sight however if that is not the case because uh the last year they also lost their writer to sexual harassment stuff so now this Mm -hmm. guy you know like six months later is gone so yeah, either, stay either, hot. either everything is fine and they're, you know, they're done with, with some parts or shit is seriously wrong at Techland on Dying Light 2. Right. And this game, this game is fucked. It's one of the two. What makes me think it's the latter is the fact that they still have been putting out stuff for the first Dying Light. True. So wouldn't you want your art director and writer to be there for the second one? Because you know they're going to put out DLC. True. That's a good point. They've been supporting it for a long time. Next nugget here, website Push Square reported that the first DLC for Ubisoft's Immortals Phoenix Rising appears to be releasing on January 21st and is titled A New God. That that publisher Square Enix quote-unquote lost faith in the Hitman franchise after historically low sales due to the episodic format of the first game, which led to developer IO Interactive splitting from the company and Mm-hmm. taking back the rights to the Hitman IP. I got to say, when we both thought this at the time, the, at first the episodic idea sounded kind of cool, and then I played the mm-hmm. first episode, and I was like, just give me the whole game. I don't like <laughs> <Right>. this. <laughs> it's like yeah, what, it's almost how I feel now with TV shows when I can't binge watch them. It's kind of yeah. what I felt like. Um, but the games are so much fun still. Like Square Enix should have watched um, Ozzy Gamer play it, and then they would have felt a lot better <laughs> about the future of the game. That dude is hilarious. New video today. He made a comeback after like seven or eight months. Yeah, I don't know where he was, but it, it, had, me in, it had me in tears. <laughs> today, today was a classic. It was really good. He was at it Miami was. at the race. <laughs> yeah, it was. Push Square also reported that developer IO Interactive has used Hitman Three to reduce the file size of the entire trilogy of games, which will now take up around 100 gigabytes combined. For reference, Hitman 2 alone, with all content installed, takes up 125 gigabytes on the PS4. How does That's that work? Weird. They, I read something about it. They said they just reworked the assets, basically, like, compressed them more or used a new type of compression. Oh, so Okay. I mean, That's yeah, kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, it's cool. Some little te- technical wizardry. I'll take it. Push Square reported that the PS5 will finally, I love this story, we will finally launch in India on February 2nd after Sony settled the <laughs> PS5 trademark dispute in the country. If you'll remember, Travis, we talked about this a few months back. A mm-hmm. Delhi resident had already claimed the PS5 trademark in the country back all the way back in October of 2019. I love it. So how the hell did Sony not have this trademark for already. PS5 in India? Jesus. Yeah, it was coming out. It was coming out six weeks later. Did, um, uh-huh. Did they, I guess they didn't disclose the um, settlement, did they? Uh, not that I've seen. Oh, well, it's crazy that the guy did that and he lives in a deli. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So that this dude, like literally, if you get on PlayStation's Twitter account at any anything they tweet, it's almost like anything Kobe used to tweet, RIP. Like if you get on PlayStation <laughs> Twitter account within like 15 tweet re- replies to the tweet, somebody's asking when the fuck it's coming to India. Like. <laughs> And like people are big pissed in India yeah. that they don't have the PS5 yet. And it's all because this asshole had the <laughs> PS5 trademark because he was smart enough to get it right. in 2019. There's Brilliant. like 6 billion people in, in India anyway, so that they're going to oh, sell God. out in 35 seconds. <laughs> True. Oh, that's good. Push Square also reported that EA Sports has finally updated the Madden NFL 21 franchise mode with several tweaks headlined by the new CPU draft logic, which will prevent issues like the Cincinnati Bengals taking a quarterback <laughs> in the first round despite having used the number one pick Good on a quarterback in last year's draft. Mm, that's Brilliant. amazing. The, by, Brilliant. by the way, they still haven't fixed a bunch of the dumbass glitches. I watched a video yesterday, no, it was today, this morning, of a guy, he's running the ball up the middle gets tackled and falls on the ground the ball gets like 
stuck on the ground. So his character stands up and they never blow the whistle. <laughs> so all the players react like it's a fumble. Uh-huh. So I guess it's a fumble glitch. And they all start kicking the ball around. <laughs> like all they're doing is kicking the ball around the field. Nobody can pick it up. And the funny part is everybody touching the ball is the offense. So everybody on the offense, it's like the linemen are hitting it. They're all trying to pick it up, but they just kick it. And then finally a defender jumps on the ball. And mm. it gives the ball as a turnover. Excellent. So they, it was like a negative 50-yard run. I swear to God, they kick it like 50 yards down the field. You can watch all kinds of crazy stuff about that and the kickoffs. And like there'll be like certain players turn invincible and you can't tackle them. It's pretty wild. I mean, I know it's they developed it in a COVID year, you know, during a pandemic. But God bless, guys. They can't even get the, the computer doesn't even know how to draft. Like, whatever. What a joke. Push Square also reported that Treyarch is pumping a mid-season update into Black Ops Cold War on January 14th, featuring new maps and new game modes. And Push Square also reported that Sony partners Epic Games have acquired Rad Game Tools, the creators of Oodle Compression Technology, which is game development middleware, which makes game file sizes exponentially smaller. So there you go, Travis. That's mm. how they do it for Hitman. Oh, that's just like um, that's just like Silicon Valley. It's on HBO if you've never watched it. The guy makes a compression format to compress music files down, and it's like revolutionarily quick and small. Well, I've read a little bit. I'm, I'm a nerd, so I read a little bit about Oodle before even this came out, and it's pretty impressive. It's like they can drastically reduce game file sizes, so um, I'm interested to see what they can do with that. We need it if they're only going to give us consoles with 600 gigabytes on them. <laughs> I mean, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. All right. Uh, website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that a job listing at developer Crytek may reveal that their next game is a first-person shooter sandbox-style game. That's interesting. Website Games Radar reported that Bethesda is teasing the, the Elder Scrolls Six's location as the province of Hammerfell in a New Year's Day tweet from the Elder Scrolls Twitter account. Where the hell is that? It's just southwest of Skyrim. You know, Hammerfell. Oh, so Skyrim's a city. It is a pro, yeah. It'd be like like um, the province, so it's like it's a, like a it's like a Canadian province, basically. Okay. So imagine, yeah. So you got so Skyrim. Hammer, Hammerfell is another one. Correct. Could you go Correct. to Hammerfell and Skyrim? You could not, but there is a race of people in Skyrim called the Red Guard who are n- natives of Hammerfell. So I've heard of the Red Guard. I've heard that they can um, be very yeah. angry. Yeah, they can. They can. So that that's that's fun. I I don't know if I'll ever get to play that game, depending on what the <laughs> hell that Microsoft does. But we'll see. Website PlayStation Universe reported that a new rumor suggests that Cyberpunk 2077 had lots of content cut from the game, which will be included as free DLC until June 2021, starting some point uh, here in the near future, and that the native PS5 version of the game will follow in late 2021. Is the native PS5 version going to have the content? What does it matter if it doesn't work? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, hey, we, we gave you all this free shit. It's still going to glitch. Awesome. PlayStation Universe also reported that the last Guardian developer, Gen Design, teased its new game in a New Year's message depicting the game's art style. The last Guardian released way back in 2016 at this point, meaning that this new project may not be far off, although it took them forever to make the last Guardian. So we'll see. PlayStation Universe reported that Ninja Gaiden developer Team Ninja confirmed that they will reveal multiple games this year. That developer PUBG Corporation will soon announce PUBG 2.0 for consoles. That the rumored new IP in development at Apex Legends and Titanfall developer Respawn Entertainment will reportedly allow players to quote-unquote adventure forever, according to a new job listing at Respawn. Hmm. That's oh, interesting. What that, means. that is, yeah. What does that mean? No Man's Sky? Uh, Yeah, that's what came to mind for me, too. We'll see. PlayStation Universe reported that Lovecraftian game The Sinking City is set to return to the PlayStation Store soon after developer Frogwares recently lost a Paris Court of Appeals dispute with publisher Nacon, which will allow the publisher to begin relisting the game on storefronts. That Dutch retailer Proxus lists the Far Cry 6 release date as April 30th, which is a Friday, which lines up pretty well for a release date. So that yeah. there might be something to that. Right. Here we go. Another, another random country dropping PlayStation news. <laughs> video gonna game be, news. It's going to be the Netherlands now. What the I love hell? it. Well, South Korea. Now it's the Netherlands. Good Lord. 
PlayStation Universe also reported that the oft-delayed action RPG Biomutant will release this quarter, meaning before April the 1st, according to publisher THQ Nordic's CEO Clemens Cruiser, which is a great name. Awesome <laughs> name. PlayStation Uni- Universe also reported that PlayStation 5 users should perhaps refrain from wearing mechanical watches when using the DualSense controller, as the unit's IMU, or Inertial Measurement Unit, is on par with the power of a laptop speak of a laptop's speakers and can apparently cause some watches to become magnetized, which that's, is not good. That's amazing. Yeah, it's not good for mechanical watches. So that's like um that's like the magnet in uh, Breaking Bad. Spoiler alert. Oh, it is. Yes, yeah, the, <laughs> big time. How, spoiler. I have a lot of questions about that. Should I put it near my balls? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, you t- but that's where you have yours though when you play because when you're talking you're talking to me at, through your balls because your controller is at your balls right yeah, I usually only talk to women through my balls <laughs> <laughs> oh don't tell your wife oh, that's good. oh man there's a whole uh, th- uh, thread or topic on reddit about these uh, magnetizing uh, hmm. watches shit by the way if you're interested Website Gamatsu reported that fighting game The King of Fighters 14 Ultimate Edition will launch on PS4 on January 20th in North America. It is already available in Europe and Japan. Jesus Christ, hopefully throw Japan a bone for Christ's sake. Yeah, they got King uh, Fighters 14, so they're happy. <laughs> yes. SNK also announced that The King of Fighters 15, the new entry in the series, will launch sometime in 2021 for PS4 and PS5. God and damn, finally, how much King Fighter information can we have? Apparently, this is a big fucking deal. I, I've never played one. Apparently, this is a huge franchise, by the way. So, mm-hmm. uh, SNK, the same developer, also, Travis, we're not done yet. We're not More. done yet. Also released, well, all, oh, I'm sorry, will also release the King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited <laughs> Match for <laughs> PS4 point. at some point in the future, featuring online rollback mm-hmm. netcode, whatever net, the hell that means. But that seems like a error. big deal. <laughs> Right. It seemed like a big deal that they were including the online rollback netcode. So whatever. God, so this guy's fathered 15 different fighters. Jesus since, Christ. Since 2002. That's what I got mm-hmm. from this. And he's a king. He's probably Correct. the king of, um, of um, hell, hell where there or wherever Skyrim is. <laughs> <laughs> hell warriors. Oh. I don't know. What it was. Oh, that's good. It's five seconds ago. You already forgot. It's on brand for you. <laughs> All right, Gamatsu also reported that eight-person multiplayer survival game Project Winter will release on PS4 later this year. And finally, Gamatsu reports that full-motion video game Ground Zero Texas Nuclear Edition will get a limited-run games physical edition for PS4 on March the 2nd. Pre-orders will go live on January 22nd over on the limited-run games website. The game was first released for... Sega or Sega or Sega CD way back in November of 1993, the year yeah. of our Lord. Um, Bob Sega. Bob Sega. Uh, the last nuclear edition I saw was in a subway in college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another great story and video. Oh, man. Uh, so, Travis, do you know what all was happening in November of 1993? We both graced this earth. Mm hmm. Fortunately, but do you you want to know what was happening at that time in November of 1993 when Ground Zero Texas was yeah. making its debut on the Sega yeah, on the Sega? Let me, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what was going Can I on. I guess I'm going to guess my context yeah. clues tell me it was Waco was on fire. Hmm. I, I I don't think so. I don't think that made the cut. Let me yeah. tell you what was going on in in 1993 in November of 1993 in these United States. Well, really, the world. Here's some good ones. <clears throat> November 1993, Rudy Giuliani became mayor of New York City. Mm. The European Union went into effect in November of 1993. The NFL announced the creation of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars, <laughs> for you lads across the pond. Jaguars. The Howard Stern radio show premiered wow. in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, of all places. The film Schindler's List made its premiere in Washington, D.C. And lastly, but certainly, most importantly, Del Earnhardt won the 43rd NASCAR <laughs> Sprint Cup in yes, November in November of 1993. Rest in, may he rest in peace and may God bless his soul. 
Yeah, one lap ahead. He's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> praise hell, praise Dale. Oh man. So that's that's a snapshot of nineteen ninety three of November nineteen ninety three. What a month. What a month. All right, that's all for the news this week. Pretty light week, Travis. I'm going to turn it over to you now for the new game releases. Take it away. In the temporarily un-United States of America, on January the 4th, we had <laughs> Madden NFL 21 Superstar Edition, which is just a money grab. Don't waste your time. Get the normal normal edition. We Following that, we have Mana Spark, which I looked up and remember nothing about. Mm-hmm. On January the 7th, we have Arcade Argra arcade archives rodland uh hmm. which is about a nudist colony on an island um <laughs> they can come see my rodland <laughs> uh, well, a lot of these archive games are actually kind of cool it's a bunch of old school like you know like arcade games that you can play on console so if you're into that they're pretty cool like pitfall and shit like that right or? yeah okay. it's just a bunch of obscure ones lately mm-hmm. um on the seventh we also have blacksmith of sand kingdom and we have what I thought was probably the coolest looking game, which was Iris Fall, Iris.Fall. It's a uh, gothic puzzler made by Next Studios, and it has some Valiant Heart vibes the way the art is, but um, hmm. there's no words in it. There's no speaking. There's no words to read. You have to figure out the puzzle with like context clues and um, you know the way the characters act and stuff. So it looks uh-huh. pretty cool if you're into that type of game. It's also black and white. Hmm. Okay. In the United Kingdom, on the 4th, we also had Madden NFL 21 Superstar Edition. The truly United Kingdom. Right. And on the 5th of January, we had ACA Neo Geo, the King of Fighters 2000. On the 7th, we also have Arcade Archives Rodland, Blacksmith of the Sand Kingdom, Iris Fall, and King of Fighters XIV Ultimate Edition. <laughs> That would be 14. That is. I'm glad you had a little, your brain stopped working for a second. It did. And then I was trying to read my notes at the same time I was speaking because at the end of that, all I wrote was tape nipples. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> are, there, are there tapes, nip, are there pasty nipples in the game? Yeah. Yeah. I saw a trailer uh, and this woman had her nipples taped over so you couldn't see them. And that, <laughs> and was, that's your as, note. As I was, that's all I remember uh, about the game was tape nipples. Oh God! Hey, you guys over in the UK, you lads over there, you lads can you can have that shit. You can keep it. Uh, so if you notice, Travis, I included the UK games list mm-hmm. uh, this time around because we we do have some some lads, some mates over there that listen to the show. Right? And, Are you guys, uh, uh, you guys driving those damn trolleys, committing this crime, stealing these PS fives? <laughs> yeah, I need to, <laughs> need to get the bobbies. That's a bit rude, isn't it, bro? Um, <laughs> they put me we, in jail. That was a terrible <laughs> accent. Uh, it was. They probably just, they're, they'll they'll listen to this and they'll just do their best hillbilly, American hillbilly accent if they listen to me. That's right. fine. Well, you know what? We would have caught Jack the Ripper, so fuck off. <laughs> we also have a couple of uh, a couple of mates from Down Under that listen, I think, as well. So that's really? where the whole Sega thing comes from. Yes. Shout out to Isaac Humphreys or Isaac Humphreys. Ah, uh, yeah. Go you never know. Isaac or Isaac. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's uh let's close the show out here. I wanted to uh let's just let's just talk a little bit about uh what what we're looking forward to in the week ahead. Is there anything coming up in your games that uh you're interested in? Do you have you have races coming up? Do you have anything big happening? What's going on with your video games? Well we have a double hit race tomorrow, uh, but I have an actual human car race tomorrow, so I'll I'll miss that out. Oh yeah, yeah. John John managed to pull the muffler off the back of the car while he was trying to load it in the trailer, which I don't even know how the hell you do that. So unless we can get that remounted, we can't actually race because we'll be over the decibel level. So <laughs> brilliant. Uh-huh. Anyway. Yeah. Um season two at UNF one starts Sunday. So um if you listen to this in the morning, um we'll be calling that race that afternoon at one o'clock Eastern US American time. Um, other than that, um uh, let's see, I'm excited to do our league. We did the off season last night, added some new guys, drafted some funny dudes who have just they're just flooded with tattoos. Like I don't even know how to describe the tattoo level my guys have. Oh, it's God. it's insane. Mm-hmm. It's it's unrealistic, but it's hilarious. Like one of my guys has just a huge a huge woman tattooed, like from his shoulder to his elbow. It's just a, a woman's head. It it's really a, no shit. Wow, 
My guy just looks Samoan. <laughs> uh, other than that, there's a GT Sport race tomorrow in the uh, manufacturers at the Nürburgring, which if you're not familiar, it's a really famous racetrack in Germany that a lot of cars, a lot of companies test their cars at. Um, it's not the Autobahn, it's an actual racetrack, and it's really technical. There's like 74 turns, a lap's like eight minutes long, so it's it, it's a lot to ask 20 cars not to uh, wreck 115 times, so... <laughs> If I get back in time, I'll do that and stream it. Sweet. If not, then um, we'll be we'll probably just be playing two K. Yep, I agree. Hopefully, we can get in some Battlefield One this week. We haven't played all week. We've been tied up with NBA, so I want to want to play some Battlefield One. I want to start the second season of our league on two K, and I really want to get back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I haven't played in mm-hmm. probably a week or more, and. And uh, I'm missing it, so I want right. to get back into it. It's it's calling me. And that um, that stealth kill video I sent you made me want to play it because like I had some pretty awesome black flag kills. I know it's it's fun, man. It's it's really it's really doing it for me. It's really scratching an itch. So, and then we're not too far off from you know starting to get into 2021 releases in mm-hmm. February. We've got Destruction All Stars on play, PlayStation Plus and things like that. So, I've also really got to get my Red Dead uh, Outlaw Pass done so I can be ready to move on. So we can download there. that. So yeah, I need room. Yeah, Destruction All Stars is next on my purchase list. I guess I probably won't get Watch Dogs until the multiplayer comes out. It seems like I don't want to get into it. But if I get into it now and play it, I'll never, I'll never play the multiplayer. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. I hear you. Well, that's uh, that's all we've got this episode. And if you guys enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing so that you never miss an episode. And if you would also be so kind as to leave us a review, whether it's good or bad, and uh, don't just give us a thumbs down. Don't be that person. Give us some context if you if you don't like it, and if you do, do that as well. We got some we got some good constructive criticism this week, and we took it in stride, so that's cool too. And then also, if you have a friend who you think may enjoy a PlayStation podcast such as this, where they can get all of the week's PlayStation news in less than ninety minutes every Sunday then please, by all means, share it with them. If you guys want to reach out to us and chat with us, you can do that on Twitter at the DualSense Pod. And if you want to maybe check out some of our game highlights and streams, like Travis Racing or me playing Valhalla and other things, you can find us on YouTube at the DualSense Podcast. And we also post our episodes there every Sunday as well, in addition to the usual podcast feeds. So we'll get out of here. You guys take care, and we will talk at you next week.